sounds weird. Hello again, everyone. Greetings and welcome to this edition of the Arlington Weekly News. I'm Craig Nolan. Thanks for joining us. Enough with the snow days. I'm Daniel Pineda. <laughs> My name's Adele Quo. And here we go with another show. This is our uh, post uh, St. Patty's Day yep. and first day of spring show for 2014. Here we go. Uh, any more snow in the forecast? I don't think no more, so. Please. But there's uh, <laughs> there's still a few piles of snurt left laying around out there. So if you want to look at the snow, check those out. Well, here we go. We have news and community bulletin board and uh, Rich in his reviews. And also, it's, it's easy, easy being green. green. There's a deal with it's easy being tighter. green. <laughs> <laughs> want to try it again? Take two. It's easy being, being green. green. Uh, Rich in his reviews. <laughs> news for seniors. I got my news for seniors glasses on. I can see everything a lot better now. And then Miriam Gennari with an interview. That's our show. But before we begin, here's a social media reminder from Mr. Daniel Penny. Absolutely correct. You can watch the Arlington <laughs> Weekly News on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News and the number one and also okay. facebook.com slash Arlington Weekly News. So please visit us on our social media sites. All right, Daniel. And now the news. Here we go with our first item on Wednesday, March 18. Arlington County Manager Barbara Donnellan announced the creation of a business ombudsman. Ombudsman. I had trouble with that before for the county. Uh, the new office's role is to work with local businesses to solve problems and find ways to enhance the county's administrative processes, such as quality assurance and customer service. This move is part of a county board uh, effort by County Board Chair Jay Fassett in his 2014 initiative for greater economic sustainability. Assistant County Manager Shannon Flannan Watson, I'm sorry, Flanagan Watson, uh, was appointed to the ombudsman role by Don Ellen. You can read about Flanagan's credentials on the website at uh, news.arlingtonva.us. Daniel. Well, that's right, Craig. The annual hearing on aging services was originally scheduled for last Monday, March the 17th. And uh, as you all know, we had a lot of snow that day and the county offices, along with almost everything else, was closed that day. The hearing has been rescheduled for this coming Monday. That's March the 24th and it's being held at 9 at the Department of Human Services, which is located at 2100 Washington Boulevard in the lower le level auditorium. Um, the hearing will cover the area plan for aging services, the budget for aging services, and the core uh, service areas. This meeting is open to the public and your comments are welcome. For more information, you can just give them a call at 703-228-1700. All right, Daniel, and the next of our news items here, well, the 2014 Arlington County Women of Vision awardees have been announced. The County's Commission on the Status of Women, or CSW, announced the three winners. Atima Omara, who is a political strategist, activist, and writer. Deborah Tompkins Johnson, a business person and writer. And Lucy Bowen McCauley, also a businesswoman, an activist, and a dance enthusiast. Marjorie Signer will get a Lifetime Achievement Award, Signer, I'm sorry, uh, for her leadership as a community and political activist. The award ceremony will be held in late April. To uh, RSVP and get more information, email amaynard at arlingtonva.us or call this number 703-228-7096. Daniel. Well, if you're not sure who to vote for in April's special election for a new county board member, then you can hear them at a voice event this month. Virginians Organized for Interfaith Community Engagement, or VOICE, will host a forum for the candidates to air their views on Thursday. That's March the 27th at 7.30 p.m. at St. John's Baptist Church, which is at 1905 Columbia Pike. The candidates will also be asked about their perspective on Voices' proposal to use public land to develop affordable housing and an initiative to fund the housing. Visit www.voice-iaf.org for details. Craig. And the news just keeps on coming. A former Arlington County DMV supervisor, Francisco Samayoa Hernandez, pleaded guilty in federal court to accepting bribes. The 33-year-old from Silver Spring admitted to taking over $11,000 in bribes in 2012 from a luxury vehicle exporter. 
He also falsified paperwork, allowing the exporter to uh, realize almost $25,000 uh, in car registration fees. Hernandez may spend up to 10 years in jail. His sentencing is coming up in June. Daniel. Well, Craig, the second annual Arlington Public School Student Film Fest is coming up in June. Entries are now being accepted, but you need to get them in by the end of the business day on Monday, April the 7th. There is no fee, and each student may enter up to five films. You can get an entry form online at the site listed on your screen. An APS student ID is required. For questions and more information, email the address on your screen. Craig. And here's some information now on the Roslyn BID. Are you ready for an identification contest? The Roslyn Business Improvement District unveiled what they claim to be the largest photographic print on the East Coast. This gigantic photo mural has been installed near the corners of Wilson Boulevard and Lynn Street North. The installation is supposed to remain at this location for about a year. So if you're in the area, uh, it's likely that you miss it. It's 6,000 square feet, and the photo was taken by Frank Halam Day. And uh, since it's bigger than the scoreboard at Nationals Park, it's hard to miss. For your contest lovers, are you contest lovers? This is a social media contest to identify the area shown in the photo. So check that out. That sounds like Check fun. it out. Check it out. <laughs> okay, Daniel and I will be back with our CBB file right after we hear from Adele. And it's easy, easy being, being green. green. Hey, Adele. Hey, hey. Hey, better, Adele. Better. Almost springtime. Almost. Almost. Today, the first day. Of hey. snow. It's easy being green, sharing the milkweed and the monarch story. To ensure your kids will enjoy watching monarch butterflies in your gardens on a sunny summer day, first understand that monarchs cannot live without our native milkweeds, Asclepius species. And our milkweeds are disappearing because parking lots, office buildings, condominiums, and shopping malls have replaced our natural landscape. Our beloved and beautiful bright orange and black monarch butterflies only lay their eggs on milkweed. And caterpillars only feed exclusively on milkweeds. They must have milkweed plants to eat or they will starve to death. So no doubt about it, monarch caterpillars are picky eaters. And more importantly, listen carefully. Stop planting the exotic invasive butterfly bush known as Budlia davidii, because it only provides nectar for the adult butterflies, but they are not used as host plants by any of the butterflies that visit. Plus, they will seed around and escape cultivation. Finally, buy and plant our native milkweed in your garden this spring. Watch your screen, jot down three more native plant sales all at the end of April, and don't worry, there'll be two more native plant sales in May that will be listed soon, so keep watching. The great news is that there are several species of milkweeds native to our Arlington area that bloom in a variety of colors such as rose, magenta, orange, dusty pink, or lavender purple. So as one of our showiest native wildflowers, include a variety of milkweed as host plants in your garden. For instance, try the swamp milkweed, known as Asclepius incarnita, in the damp spots of your rain garden or at the edge of a pond. Or try purple milkweed, Asclepius purpurescens, for partially shady, dry areas. They are easy to grow. And butterfly weed, Asclepius tuberosa, for a bright pop of orange color. Remember, it's easy being green with milkweed and the monarchs. Adele, All right. some tough I names. I like it. Yeah. Milkweed is for monarchs That's and right. vice versa. That's right. So plant milkweed. Plant Can you milkweed. plant milkweed? Absolutely plant milkweed. Plant milkweed. They're beautiful. It's a good idea. And keep the monarchs around. Keep them coming. <laughs> I like it. Thanks, Adele. Thank you, we Adele. We appreciate it. All right, here we go with our first of our items in our CBB or Community Bulletin Board file. Opera Nova is an all-volunteer, non-profit organization with the goal of making opera performances accessible and affordable for everyone living in Northern Virginia. The group is looking for someone to lead their fundraising network. If you are a confident and creative person 
who can develop fundraising opportunities, increase Opera, Nova's, Opera Nova's visibility, and leverage local businesses and community connections, and organize resources to support the group's fundraising team, then they're looking for you. Give them a call at 703-536-7557 for more information. Daniel. Well, the Alliance of Arlington, or for Arlington Senior Programs needs your help. Intended to support the Office of Senior Adult Programs, the Alliance is putting together a quote-unquote a path to the future for older adults in Arlington. There are some exciting opportunities for volunteers to help out whatever your skill level is. For more information, just give them a call at 703-869-2358. Craig. All right, and also on our CBB file, well, the spring just around the corner today, the first day of spring, uh, we can look forward to a lot more greenery and flowers popping up all over the place, but it also brings vines, and they can slowly entangle and suffocate trees. Well, the Department of Parks and Recreation, or DPR, needs help getting rid of these uh, deadly invasive vines. If you're age nine or older, and you can use clippers, then give them a call. They're looking for your help. Their number is 703-228-1862. And if you're under 15, you'll need a parent or a guardian to be with you. If you're 15 to 17 years of age, you just need uh, something from your parents saying that it's okay for you to participate in this vine removal project. They do it on Tuesdays through Saturdays from 10 to 5 and Sunday afternoons from 1 to 5. For more information on this volunteering opportunity, give them a call, 703-228-18. Six two. I like that cry. Just around the corner. Just around the corner. Great well, let's song. Let's do this one together here. If you've been watching and listening watching. to Adele Quo on, let's say it. Ready? One, two, three. It's, it's easy, easy being, being green. green. You'll know that plant invaders can hurt the health of our community's plants. DPR needs your help eliminating invaders like English ivy, bush honeysuckle, and others. You can work in the Lacey Woods neighborhood every second Saturday of the month from 10 a.m. to noon. Other locations where you can work are the Golf Branch Nature Center sessions meet every second Sunday from 2, 2 until 5 p.m. Takahoe Park meets on the third Saturdays from 10 until noon, and Long Branch Nature Center meets on the third Sundays of each month from 2 to 5 p.m. Benjamin Benneker Park meets on the fourth Saturday of the month from 10 a.m. to noon. If you have your own garden gloves and tools, please bring them. Call 703-228-1862 for more information and to offer your help. All right, thanks, Daniel, and we'll be back with our News for Seniors file right after we hear from Rich and his reviews. Hey, Here's Rich. Rich. Thank you, boys. Thank you. The Metropolitan Opera simulcast, I'm a great fan of those. Every, every few weeks uh, or less, they have something at the Regal Theaters in Boston, and they recently have, it's out now, is uh, Jules Massenet's uh, Werther. I didn't know that before, but I can't remember I've seen an opera that had such feeling, such emotion, and the relationship between the guy and the gal. Uh, Jonas Kaufman played Werther, and his love, Charlotte, was played by Sophie Koch, who happened to be ma uh, a fiancé of uh, Albert, who uh, he just happened to be out of town. And, uh, well, their feelings and their emotions were bubbling over. Uh, really, good stuff. Uh, uh, I wonder if it's going to come back or it's still around or... Anyway... Uh, Werther, that's uh, W-E-R-T-H-E-R, -E at the Boston Regal Theatres. And, and uh, check them out. I love these simulcasts right from the stage of the uh, Metropolitan Opera in New York. La Boheme is coming up April 5. And then Cosi Fantuti, that's a funny thing. That's coming April 26. Check Met, uh, metopera.org or call 703-525-4102. Synetic Theater is another story, boy. There's something else. Uh, they've been con been known uh, for doing what they call wordless productions. That doesn't mean without sound or great music and everything, but they don't talk. And they're jumping around. Choreography is great. And the show that they're currently doing right now over there in Crystal City is Hamlet, The Rest is Silence. 
uh, with Synetic's large regular cast headed by Alex Mills as Hamlet and co-founder Irina Sisovili as Gertrude uh, and uh, uh, knocks you out. Uh, Iraq, uh, Iraqi uh, Kazavazi is Claudius, and uh, it's, it's just a big cast. They always have a big cast. There's 1800 South Bell Street in Crystal City, and it's free parking underneath the ground. You park yourself. Hamlet runs through April 6th. For more info, uh, call 1-866-811-4111 and check the website at www.synetictheater, that's an E-R, Dot org. I got to tell you about two restaurants because you know I'm crazy about food. And uh, uh, some friend of mine recommended I go out to Reston and try Gregorio's Trattoria. Uh, I mentioned this, I think, last week, but the, the, the chef, Carmen uh, Geek, uh, and owner Greg uh, Khan uh, own this place and they, they do a job there. It's where they, they know I'm a nut for veal parmesan. And they made a veal parmesan, I'm telling you, that uh, wouldn't quit. It was uh, just excellent. My friend had a veal chop. He's a nut for veal chop. He's gone up to New Jersey to an Italian restaurant there to get a veal chop, you know, something like that. Well, anyway, uh, but they got, it's a, it's a full service place. They got everything you want. And um, uh, there's just, uh, just so much to eat. Uh, Gorgorio's business card says that the secret ingredient is love. You know, I kind of believe that. They're located in Reston at the what they call the North Point Village Center, just off uh, Reston Parkway. Uh, anyway, call for reservation at 703-689-4894 and check the website at gregoriostrattaria.com. And by the way, there's another, they got their other sister restaurant, Gregorio's Trattoria, up in Potomac, Maryland. But I'm not old enough to go that far out, you know. Uh, now, I tell you about another Italian restaurant. These two are competing. <clears throat> and they both got wonderful veal parmesans. And they got more. But I'm a nut for veal parmesan. Uh, right in Georgetown on 31st Street, 1068. You go like over Key Bridge, going out M Street there. And then you make a right. And uh, just a half a block there, there's a little house on the right. It's been there since 1986. I didn't know that. Ristorante Piccolo. Uh, and the, when I went in there, I, I'd never been kissed so much by anybody except by this general manager guy named David Shaw. Shaw. I've known him for years. He used to be a waiter somewhere else 10 years ago in Washington. And then he pops up, you know, I've been doing this so long. Anyway, uh, I highly recommend this place. Uh, it's friendly. Food's good. What, what do you want? And the general manager, David uh, Shaw, S-H-A, what did I say, Shaw? S-H-A-N, Sean. Um, anyway, the phone number for the restaurant is 202-342-7414. And, uh, well, you really can't go is wrong it, with it. It's in Georgetown? Yeah, 31st Street. Uh, like I said, you just oh, go make a right there. Yeah, make a right around the corner, and it's right there. Um, and so you can look them up on their website. Uh, what, what's his website? I got it right here. Hold on. www. What do you know? Piccolo. DC.com. Yes, P I C C O L O D C.com. And uh, it's really a rustic Italian joint. I like it. That's all I got to so, report. So you today. went Italian Ooh. this week. That's right. Piccolo. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Both places. Yeah. Piccolo, piccolo, piccolo. They got piccolo. veal parmesan. Man. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't have veal parmesan, they don't well, go. You're going to bring them in here and have them mix I know. Veal we have parmesan, to try some of course. That's right. Yeah. You know, you got a point there. Our man about town. On. Thanks, Rich. Thank you, Rich. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Okay. Here we go now. As promised, our news for seniors file. Item number one Senior Navigator is an online program that introduces seniors to various senior-related services, as well as an array of educational resources and opportunities. A representative from Senior Navigator, Kim Tirantino, will conduct a seminar on Thursday, March 27, 1 in the afternoon, at Walter Reed Senior Center. She'll explain how to, he, she, I'm sorry, will explain how to use this great program. Call Walter Reed to register for this FRWE free program, 703-228-0955.
Daniel. Well, it seems like we're always talking about decluttering. We spend a lifetime collecting treasures thinking we will pass them on. Well, <laughs> nine times out of ten, no one will want them as they are busy collecting uh, their own treasures. Tale. Yep. <laughs> Patsy Ann Misiti uh, from Seniors Living Well will speak to these issues and provide helpful tips on how to get started cleaning out. She will be at the Langston Brown Senior Center on Wednesday, that's March the 26th at 1 p.m. Call Langston Brown Senior Center at 703-228-6300 to register for this free program. Uh, yes, free uh, program. Really, uh, that's one that I should go to. I know, <laughs> I know I should go to that one. All right, thanks, Daniel. Here we go, the next of our News for Seniors items, geriatric care manager and family nurse practitioner from Care Options, Shannon Campanelli. We'll lead a free, FRWE free discussion on aging brain, including the difference between normal forgetfulness and dementia. This worthwhile discussion will take place on Thursday, March 27, 1 in the afternoon at Langston Brown Senior Center. For more information and to register, give them a call, 703-228-6300. Daniel. Well, over the summer, seniors are often targets of people offering cheap yard work and home repairs. If you're not happy with the work, they are they often threaten with fines or warrants for additional payments to address made-up agreement violations. Well, Heather Herlock of the Arlington County Police Department will meet with seniors to discuss common summer scams. This free program is on Tuesday, March the 25th at 11 a.m. at the Arlington Mill Senior Center. Call to register at 703-228-7369. All right, Daniel. And uh, sadly enough, funeral planning is always a difficult topic, but an increasing number of people are planning their own funerals in advance. Oakwood Cemetery's Beth Thomas will be talking at Lee Senior Center to discuss the benefits of advanced funeral arrangements. This free program will be held Monday, March 31, at 1 in the afternoon. For more information and to register, call them at 703-228-0555. And as always, thanks to Judy Misabney of OSAP Judy. for helping Thank us you. out and sending us these announcements. We appreciate it. We'll be back with a quick goodbye if we have time right after we hear from Miriam and her guest. Here's Miriam. Hey, Miriam. Thank you. And now, welcome to another edition of the Sustainable Scoop. I'm Miriam Gennari, and I'm here with Alan Howes. Alan is a candidate running for Arlington County Board to replace longtime board member Chris Zimmerman. So thanks for joining us, Alan. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. Well, now, Alan, if by chance you are elected to the county board, you will have a claim that no one else on the board has. You are a native Arlingtonian. That's right. I was uh, born in Arlington Hospital and uh, grew up on Jackson Street in Clarendon and uh, have spent a lot of my life here in Arlington. Uh, went to Drew Elementary School. I, I lived in Fairlington with my wife for a while and now we're raising our own family in the Highland Park area uh, near Westover and I've got uh, three children. I've got an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, and a three-year-old. So it's, uh, it's a busy time at the Howes household, but uh, we're having a lot of fun with the campaign. Well, there's no question about that. But, you know, the, the unique perspective that you have growing up here in Arlington, watching Arlington change over the past, what, 40 years? Yeah, give or take. Give or take. Um, tell me, what have we done right here in Arlington? And in a few words, I'd also like to hear, what could we do better? Sure. Yeah, right. I'm, uh, I'm optimistic about the future that we have in Arlington, and, and part of that is, is my experience and what I've seen over our community. I was uh, a small boy when the metro opened up uh, about a block and a half from my home, and so I've seen the transformation that has taken place here in Arlington with the arrival of a high-quality mass transit and what that's allowed us to do as a community to to uh, match uh, higher density in our commercial corridors, create a strong and vibrant economy in Arlington while protecting our neighborhoods and, uh, and that small town feel that I think we all cherish. Uh, 
I think there are some challenges that have come with that development, and uh, affordable housing is certainly probably at the very top of that list. One of the unintended consequences of having access to transit was that you know, it provides really uh, quality of life benefits for people, and they're willing to pay a premium to be close to transit. That in turn has driven up home prices in Arlington and, uh, and has made it challenging for a lot of people to live here. So I think the, how we deal with affordable housing, uh, how we make sure that we continue to have a diverse community is one of those challenges that we have going forward and one of the unintended consequences that, uh, that we need to deal with in terms of the success that we've had as a community, building a place that people want to live, they want to work, they want to raise their families. All right. Well, uh, I, I know that the desire to serve is, is deep within you, and you've run for office before. But here in this um, particular race, we have a candidate who not only wants to serve, but he also wants to break up what many feel is a monopoly of single-party rule. So as a Democrat, how would you and your priorities enhance the board and maybe even challenge them a little? Yeah, sure. So I'm excited about some of the priorities and uh, the fresh perspectives that I can bring to the board, both as the parent of children in Arlington School. So as we're dealing with the challenge of school overcrowding, I think it's important that we have a voice on the county board of somebody who actually has children in our schools. None of our current county board members or other candidates in this race actually have kids currently in Arlington schools. Right. That said, yep. um, John Weistad has great experience in the schools and has served. So he's been here for a long time. How about in particular your unique skill set that you can that you can bring to the board? Sure, absolutely. So uh, so I bring a combination of experience in government. I worked on the Hill. I worked for Mark Warner when he was governor of Virginia. Uh, I've also spent a decade working in the private sector and uh, I work for IBM and it really focused around innovation in government. How can we make government work better to deliver better services for residents at lower costs? So okay, so a little bit of sustainability. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right, now I, I'd be remiss in not asking you this because transportation is really what mm -hmm. what puts Arlington on the map, so to speak. Um, but transportation is what's dividing this community right now. And a lot of people are concerned about the streetcar and whether or not it's going to first be one of those projects that costs so much money it never pays for itself, but second, helps to kind of move people out of having the opportunity to live an affordable lifestyle in Arlington because their housing costs are going to balloon. How do you address that? Sure. So I think that is one of the lessons we learned from Metro is, is how do we make sure we're protecting affordable housing. We had the same conversation in our community 50 years ago when people were saying, well, let's just run buses up and down Wilson Boulevard instead of putting in Metro. Uh, so we know from our own experience over decades that investment in, uh, in high quality transit can produce great dividends for the community and in fact it allows us the commercial corridors we have along the orange and the blue line provide half of our tax revenue which allow us to have better schools and a stronger social safety net than other communities. So when I look at the, the uh, streetcar project, not just the Columbia Pike segment, but also the Crystal City segment, what I see is that if we do it right, if we manage it correctly, and we can't give it a blank check uh, as we can with any project, uh, but that it can not only pay for itself, but also to provide broader benefits for the communities along the pike as well as for all of Arlington. Well, I certainly hope that there'll be some ideas on how to mitigate the uh, the financial effects that it'll have Absolutely. on people it's because important. we are finding that Arlington is losing a good deal of its diversity, yeah. and that's important. It is. Yeah. Now, um, uh, before before I let you go, I know that you're uh, you're you have an entrepreneurial spirit, <laughs> and I know that it's really important to bring jobs to Arlington, good quality jobs, jobs that even employ people who have not um, had the benefit of a college education. So, what would you do to help do that here in Arlington? Sure. So, a couple of years ago, I, I did with my wife start a company to do energy audits for residences. It was a way to try and use the private sector to solve uh, and help to address the challenge of climate change, which I believe very strongly in. Uh, I got into politics through environmental activism and I'm committed to it. I think we can and should be looking at how do we partner with private sector businesses uh, to, to do things like install more solar in the community, to retrofit our homes and businesses, to use less energy so that we can be part of the solution for climate change. Uh, going it, forward. It would also be wonderful if they were hiring people from here in Arlington Absolutely. when they go I, to build new buildings. I agree with that. Well, I want to thank you so much, Alan, for coming thank here you. and joining us and, and sharing a little bit about yourself. Uh, the election is April 8th. 
April 8th. Yes, and uh, you said early voting has already started. Yep, early and absentee voting. You can either vote at the uh, courthouse uh, or you can vote by mail if you're going to be out of town or uh, other places during Election Day and encourage people to learn more at my website at allenhouse.com and, uh, and come out and vote. It's an important election for our community. Excellent. Well, you said it, Alan, so thank you so much. And I want to thank you, our viewers, for watching uh, the Arlington Weekly News. That's the Sustainable Scoop. Back to you at the news desk. Thank all right, you, thanks, Miriam, Thank and you. thanks to all of you for watching this first day of spring edition of the Arlington Weekly News. Uh, anything else to add before we go? I'm no more shade. snow. No more no snow. No more snow. No snow. No uh. snow. That's it. We got to go. Uh, have a safe week. Uh, you'll be there. We'll be here next Bye. week, and we'll do it all again. Bye-bye.